Uh, so whenever you're ready. Uh, we have received uh, two questions on, uh, over the email, <coughs> and I was uh, able to, uh, to put them uh, in writing on, the pre on this presentation. One is from uh, Dr. Olejnik uh, from Gdańsk. So he's asking, uh, I, I will read it perhaps aloud. Let's consider the following problem. It is non-negotiable that crystalline SI, silicon, or diamond have well-defined band structures. The concept of band structure is slightly weaker for objects such as amorphous SI, or carbon-based conductive polymer due to breaking the ideal translational symmetry. But it can be still defined. How about the liquid electrolyte where the symmetry is broken even more? Can the concept of band structure be defined for electrolytes? The, the answer is yes, uh, but I'm not, uh, I'm not fluent in, in uh, electrolytes or liquids at all. Uh, it, it was a nightmare uh, from the theoretical point of view. To, uh, however, uh, I can share uh, just, just perhaps common belief uh, with you here that uh, when you have amorphous or glass type uh, disordered solids, they should be comparable with those liquids, with the electrolytes. And uh, actually, uh, lot, lots of work was done in having theoretical models for, uh, for those types of materials but they are still solid, not liquid. And <clears throat> uh, you can find, I mean, what I am aware of is this old uh, work from about uh, band structure of desert alloys and your uh, intuition that more defects, uh, what they do, they turn the sharp edges of bands uh, into some slopes and uh, um, the picture of, of band gap is not that clear. Uh, so you are right. Uh, and uh, there is also a more recent paper uh, on, on the liquids. And they use uh, just a hoping model uh, for, for the liquid. And what is striking in general is it is that, OK, you have a disordered material, liquid or not liquid. Doesn't matter here. However, you still have kind of ordering uh, length or ordering parameter that is uh, distant dependent. So if you look at molecule, molecules close by, they are all, I mean, you can treat them as balls and their distances fluctuate a little bit, but they are more or less arranged the same. If you look at longer distances, those, this arrangement, this ordering breaks at some point However, this, this, this order structure for, for nearby uh, molecules is good enough to have uh, band gaps. So it is not just the clinic penny model that you will have to have infinite or semi-infinite uh, structure uh, to, in order to get uh, forbidden energies somewhere, but this uh, short distance ordering also uh, has this effect. This is why uh, liquids are not s so much different from the, uh, from the disordered media. I believe, <laughs> but I know nothing, next to nothing about, about it. So, uh, and I didn't have time to, to look into that to, to answer your question because uh, I was preoccupied with other things. So this is uh, my take on, uh, on that. Uh, if somebody would like to help me or to, to explain it better, you're welcome to join. So uh, nobody, oh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, maybe it could be similar to Zahariasen uh, theory for glass uh, when we have a small arrangement in the material and in the long distance uh, we cannot observe. Yes, yes, uh, I mean glass is disordered systems, it is, it is exactly what I would be looking for. Uh, for. Yes, you are. I agree with that. Uh, okay, and another question. <laughs> I, 
Uh, this comes from uh, Dr. Winkowski uh, about quasi-Fermi levels. And I'm grateful for that one. Uh, uh, we haven't arranged it again. But uh, instead of sharing uh, knowledge with you, I, I will share ignorance uh, this time. Uh, and why is it? So I, I have just this piece of, uh, of information. Uh, nothing more was added just to, can you explain the diagram and those quasi-Fermi levels? So supposedly, you have a surface on this side. And this is a band diagram. This is some uh, valence band here some conduction band up top. And the light is coming from, the, from your left. OK? And you see those uh, dashed levels. Uh, presumably, those are uh, uh, quasi-Fermi levels. And they join all together to form a, uh, a constant electrochemical potential of Fermi level in the bulk of the material deep in the bulk. And uh, well, uh, quasi-Fermi levels uh, bothered me for a long time. Uh, I didn't understand them why. I mean, I, I didn't understand uh, this concept at all. Uh, actually, uh, part of the problem was the uh, remark made by uh, Professor Kuncevich here that uh, the formal explanation for quasi-Fermi uh, levels make no sense. And why is that? If you look in textbooks, perhaps I can use uh, a simple uh, explanation here. Oh, yeah. We can go here. It's movable a little bit. Suppose uh, you have your band diagram. So this is energy. And this would be uh, the lower uh, state of the conduction band. And this is the upper uh, edge of the valence band. And now the explanation that I'm aware of uh, from the uh, books is the following for, for quasi-Fermi level. Uh, suppose that we do excitations from this uh, position over here. So electron is moved from, from that energy to that energy. And what happens then? First of all, you have those fast processes that are called interbands, uh, intraband, intraband processes, right? that are happening uh, within the band, and they are very fast. They are on scale of picoseconds. So this guy will give up its excess energy and will end up somewhere at the bottom of the band. Or of, if the Fermi level is at the bottom, it will end up right there. But Fermi level can be just in the middle here. OK. So this is one process. Another process, similar in nature, is for this whole thing. This hole will migrate to the top very quickly on the picosecond time scale. And then you can have possible transitions. Those transitions between the bands, they happen on the scale of nanoseconds, or tens of nanoseconds, if, if you will. So you, we have two separate uh, time scales. If this is the case, so one is uh, time, uh, 1,000 times, let's say, faster than the other. So before any transition between the bands happen, electrons in the conduction band will have time to thermalize. And they could be described by their own Fermi, uh, Dirac Fermi statistics. Same thing for holes here. They will have time to thermalize and uh, yeah, we can treat them as system in equilibrium already. So we'll have this great uh, Fermi statistics here. And this one here for uh, zero, I have to do it like this, for the holes. 
However, if that is the case, and this was the remark uh, that I mentioned, the Fermi level, I mean this quasi-Fermi level for holes, oh, for, for electrons here and for holes here, this one would be above the bottom of the conductance band. Why? Because whatever happened here, most certainly it will end up at the ground state of the, uh, of the conduction band or up. So this ground state will be occupied full time. So it must be one. This distribution might, must be one here. On the other hand, with the hole, same thing. Occupation of the ground state must be one because everything you, you can excite here, I mean, you can remove uh, an electron from here, it will migrate to the surface in no time. So occupation here must be also one. That means that the Fermi level, the zero, must be somewhere deeper in energy here. So the Fermi level for, if you wish, for uh, the holes, the quasi-Fermi level for holes, would be be below the upper edge of the, uh, of the valence band, which is not what you see on the picture, okay? They are not in, above the edges. Rightfully so, they are within the band gap, both of them. This is for electrons and this is for uh, holes, I believe. And then they merge into the Fermi level inside the band gap. Uh, and why do they merge there? It is because, uh, I presume from this picture, I don't know the description of it, okay? I mean, from the paper, I, ju I, ju I just see that. That uh, most of the photons are reaching the, uh, close to the surface, then they are, they, the extinction rate for the photons is higher and only a few photons will reach to that point. And those photons drive your system out of equilibrium. And quasi-Fermi levels are descriptions of the system in equilibrium. When there is an equilibrium, this Fermi level will extend to the surface, and actually those quasi-Fermi level will be indistinguishable from, from the Fermi level. Because in equilibrium, you, you don't even need the notion of uh, quasi-Fermi levels. Uh, again, the standard uh, explanation. I, I was, after, after having this remark and I, I couldn't uh, ask, answer that, I asked specialists that deal with uh, quasi-Fermi levels and they would say, of course they are, they are real, okay? They, this, uh, this is the driving voltage uh, to produce photocurrent. If you don't have this splitting, you would not have any photocurrent and, in the system. And they would, uh, refer me to, to that explanation, to textbooks. Uh, however, when asked, uh, I, I would pass to them this remark, they were kind of confused or just refused to, to accept that it is something important uh, to, to know. And so for a long time, I, I couldn't use uh, uh, quasi-Fermi levels at all because I didn't understand the concept, so I didn't, perhaps it is like band bending. It is not there, okay, and you would be using some magic to explain other magic. Well, it was until recently. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, this is, this, this is the answer. And I will show you this uh, professor. This is Suprio Data uh, from Purdue University. And he published uh, lectures from nanoelectronics on YouTube. And this is... Uh, this is one of the lectures. It is called, I mean, this has a number. This is part A and L lectures 3.3. And this is the lecture what I would refer you to, to see what those Fermi levels, uh, quasi-Fermi levels really are. Because those are not explained this way. The quasi-Fermi level, according to, uh, to that uh, Landauer's picture, this is why I like it uh, so much, too, is that, of course, I mean, this is a border between mostly occupied and unoccupied states, but, but, those are not stationary states like that, but those are states moving electrons leftwards, 
and right words. And this is, uh, I mean, you can, when you have a cosine, okay, you can split it into two waves going, uh, counter-propagating, left and right. And this will give you a cosine function. We'll talk about that more tomorrow. However, when you have imbalance, then those two uh, uh, parts may have simply, may be shifted differently in energies. And it turns out that uh, this is the case. Then when you have uh, put your some sort of distortion, so you, you drive your system out of equilibrium, then this distinction happen. And really what, uh, what quasi-Fermi levels mean is that there are the energy of occupied states in one direction, uh, moving in one direction, is higher than in the other direction. And that's it. And from, uh, from the Slandauer's picture, you can get the current going because of that. However, I'm nowhere near uh, an expert in that field. And you should look for experts. And this gentleman um, seems to be one of them. So this is my take on, uh, on quasi-Fermi levers. If it's, yeah, go ahead. I have my own point of view of uh, quasi-Fermi levels, but maybe it's a little bit longer story because I don't really think that we have to consider them as a bend, bended structure or whatever, yeah? Oh, they, they can bend perfectly. Th those, are not, those are not quantum levels. They are statistical levels. They can bend as much as you want. This, this is no problem. This is not a problem. No, no, no. Okay. It's, it's, they can bend. This is, this is fine. My understanding is uh, following. When you have uh, N-type semiconductor, like at this picture, yeah, it, what does it mean? It means that below the conduction band, you have some certain non-zero density of electronic states. And some of them are populated. Yeah? Uh, not really. Because this argument should be also true for perfect crystal, you, you, you introduce the notion of quasi-Fermi level and you don't have to think that, okay, in reality, perhaps there is some uh, trap states in the, in the gap that you may consider. No, this is a, this is a pure case. In, in, in most idealistic case, this definition doesn't work. And, uh, yes, because uh, there are no perfect crystals. So no, 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 <laughs> this definition is screwed. I mean, uh, the, this is not true. Yeah, go ahead. Yes. So, so my understanding is that when you excite a semiconductor, so, so you just uh, can imagine that instead of the distance, you can imagine here on the x uh, axis, yeah. you have just intensity of light, which is reaching the, uh, the certain distance. Yeah, yeah. Yes? And when you excite it, you pump more and more electrons to the conduction band. So you populate more and more electrons, so you shift the Fermi level because higher and higher states are occupied. Oh. <laughs> no, not really. Uh, with the temperature, you excite only w what is KT? KT is 25 milli electron volts. Okay. Uh, what is the, on a time scale, what is the time scale for this excitation and what is the time scale for equilibrating? I mean, if, you, if you have more density of electrons I would rather here. ask about the time scale for, uh, for how long living these electrons are in the conduction band or in the traps below the conduction band. Yes, but the time scale in the conduction band is the one that matters. And still, even if you have some excess electrons uh, over here, they will spread evenly throughout your system if it is not, you know, infinite and the relativistic effects are not considered on the time scale of uh, picoseconds. Again. May I draw something? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. But I have to come back to a real crystal. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Go so ahead. let's imagine we have a density of states here, energy, and we have some, 
here is our conduction band. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with the n-type semiconductor, we have field states, of course, not densely populated yeah. to some level. Now, when we excite electrons to the conduction band, doesn't matter here or here, the electrons will feel up in certain time. Uh, higher and higher states, moving the Fermi level here, upper and upper, yeah? And now with the holes, the same happens. You depopulate uh, some states which are, okay, let's say we have here the valence band yeah, yeah. somewhere, yeah? You depopulate them, moving holes, yeah. empty sp yeah. Uh, uh, so, I like always to compare electrons with drops of water and holes with bubbles. Yeah, so... <laughs> yeah, and you need gravity for them to move. Uh, yeah, they, they are busy. Uh, uh, the, actually, this is not no, what happens gravity, with you have to throw a stone, so you have to put a photon to... Still, to, to do quasi-Fermi level exist <laughs> uh, when you have a perfect crystal, when you don't have those states? Do they exist, the quasi-Fermi level? Because you can still excite the electrons and produce those pairs, even if the crystal is perfect. Do those levels exist then? This is the thing. Yeah. In the uh, perfect, in the perfect yeah. crystal, you have a Fermi level here. Yeah? If it, level. if it is if not it is doped. If it is not doped, yes. And then, and then, uh, yeah. but if it is doped, it is never perfect crystal. Yeah, it is. It can, it can, okay, let's say so, it can so, be so interesting. So in this case, conductor. if there is really nothing in between, yeah. I, I think that then this fails. I, I, I agree. No, it if doesn't. Is, if all these energy levels are forbidden, it makes no sense to, to, to put the Fermi level there. Not, not really. Uh, uh, I can uh, prove to you, perhaps not in front of everybody here, that and without the stick, <laughs> that, uh, that, uh, that, uh, that this is not the case, actually, that those quasi-Fermi levels do exist, even if you have perfect crystal, and they are very well defined uh, when you understand them. Mm -hmm. However, I don't say I, I do understand, mm -hmm. but I n perhaps know the guy who does <laughs> this. Uh, and I have a grasp of his uh, explanation, just, just a small one. And to my understanding, they will exist also in, uh, for perfect crystal because it is thermodynamical uh, concept. It is perfect crystals also uh, need to follow laws of thermodynamics. So this is... Uh, for, for now. Help. <laughs> that's good. That's good that you have this agreement. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because you told that you pump the electrons, you can move your frame level. So in the, uh, can in the I, space... Can I really? No. Space region. Not true. Not true. You can pump as much as you want, and this frame level will stay at the same position. Because what will happen... At, what, what can happen? How do you know that it moves when well, you at, uh, throw photons at it? Because uh, what will happen, it, it can be just... you. of electrons stays the same. Yeah. You can have a bump here, perhaps, because of your action, and bump here because of your action, but the Fermi level in the middle stays the same. So what? Those are non-equilibrium uh, conditions. It, when you add uh, light, it doesn't mean that your Fermi level or something that remains as a Fermi level will shift up or down. It, it, it can stay the same. So, so I mean, the bulk, this, yes. the situation like the temperature, also we have the excitation of electrons, but the Fermi level... Yeah, yeah, you, you, can, you can heat up your crystal and what you will get, you will stay, this uh, Fermi level will stay the same, despite that you have put some fire underneath. But it will just be, the slope will be just uh, uh, larger, uh, smaller, as, as you wish. So it will be it, this region where you have part, partially occupied and unoccupied states will be larger in energy. That's it. And, but the Fermi level can stay the same. And this is what happens in normal temperatures. So this is, uh, I believe that this explanation needs to... Uh, Good, good, because, uh, you know, uh, I, I will just uh, make a short introduction uh, to uh, my background, uh, because I, I am from the group of a couple of young guys that w from physics department here in Krakow, and uh, 
we were very competitive. So everybody, uh, I mean, every one of those guys wanted to get the Nobel Prize, of course, when we were stud uh, just studying physics. And uh, whenever I had this great idea that uh, was surely uh, putting me on, the, uh, on this constellation of great physicists, uh, I would go to them and they would tell me how stupid I am and they, uh, they would be right because they would provide an argument that actually this idea makes no sense and I have to learn. And I was humiliated over and over. Of course, they, they were also humiliated by themselves and some, from time to time by myself. Good feeling, however, uh, because of that, over time, uh, we got really uh, good understanding of, of the fields that we are uh, uh, trying to, 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 to get expertise in. And there is no way, perhaps, I was uh, to progress without be <laughs> exposing yourself to being completely stupid. And uh, so this is uh, what I uh, practice. And perhaps you are correct, but not in this respect, perhaps. <laughs> Just <coughs> perfect crystals should obey uh, the laws of thermodynamics. And uh, I'm not an expert in here. If I would ask anybody on the audience, I would add, ask Professor Alitsky if he agrees with, with me. Or I don't know if, uh, if he would like to say a word uh, on that. I have to say about this, but for, for sure I do not believe in uh, the, this picture, you know, of position-dependent uh, Fermi levels. I, I think that there is... Those are quasi -fermi. This is why they are called the quasi-fermi. Uh, quasi. I think maybe there is a kind of the notion, like, I also discuss this position-dependent um, chemical potential, which is defined by uh, Fermi distribution and uh, the square of wave functions. That the only thing which can really uh, be um, position dependent is wave function. And wave functions are modified by light because this is a non equilibrium system yeah. uh, and the presence of light change also the Hamiltonian somehow of, of, of the system. So it can produce a, a modification of a wave function of electrons, so they are slightly different close to. Uh, it's like essentially a junction of two materials. One material is of the lens uh, of the absorption lens of the light. It defines one material and the rest is the other material. So it's similar to, uh, to PN uh, junction. So it has uh, no band bending, nothing like this, but yeah. it, it may have position dependent density, or, uh, wave function density of states and also local chemical potential. And with this notion, I think one can explain the, 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 the However, uh, physics. do you believe that, uh, I mean, do quasi-Fermi quasi levels exist as, as they are explained or not? As they are explained, not. Not, okay, not. So, so you are even more radical than I am. Uh, yes, that, that, yes. That's all right. Uh, I have uh, also, uh, working on this band bending thing, uh, also gave me, uh, similar uh, notion of, I, I call it quantum energy diagrams instead of ordinary ones. And those quantum energy diagrams take into account wave functions. How? Suppose that we have a sur surface wave function and we have an arbitrary rule that we will find the, for this wave function, it is an eigenstate of the Hamiltonian. So this is proper, properly defined wave function. Uh, and the arbitrary rule is that only draw its energy over the parts where the wave function modulus squared, so the probability is greater than something, let's say like 1% or 100th one of a percent of, 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 the, of, the, of the height. And then you'll have those discontinuous uh, dotted lines because if you have wave function that has big peak here, you will just have one, uh, one dashed uh, level. It would be of finite extension. It will not go forever. It only goes where the function is, uh, has significant uh, probability. Mm -hmm. If it has two bumps, then you will have this one bar and on the same uh, height, another bar for the wave function 
that is where well, it is significant. If you do those uh, dashes, if you, if you li work like that, and you have surface potential, it turns out that those dashes really follow those bend bendings, but uh, I mean, so called bend bendings, but uh, the explanation for them the, the, is, is quite different. Because, as you're right, the uh, structure of wave function is no longer the block uh, yes, wave function, yes, it, it is localized somewhere. It's a surface state, uh, yeah, first of all. Yeah, so so block so functions less. exist only uh, far away from, from any. Yeah, they decay exponentially uh, into the bulk, so, yeah, so uh, and pretty quick. Uh, yes, but, yeah. but energy levels are simply constant. They, they yeah, but, but the quasi <laughs> Fermi levels are a different concept, and uh, Professor okay. Data. Probably we could agree if we accept something that, uh, that the quasi Fermi levels are like uh, uh, position dependent uh, chemical potentials. Okay, so then we probably so can... So why there are two of them at the same, uh, for the same place? I don't know, maybe you do not need two of them really, so... so no, so, you do so need one because you have... something, the other is minus something. No, 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 no. You need two of them. <laughs> yes. You need two of them. I, I, I don't know uh, if you really need two of them. Uh, Professor Data would say, tell because, you... Uh, for example, you do not need concept of, of uh, whole, as you said. Yes, yes, uh, yes. At all. Yeah, so that, that's correct. I, I, I think that it's also a, a, a kind of maybe nice uh, simplification of the problem. But yeah, there are no holes. You can get rid of this. This is the thing. There are no holes, but there are left moving electrons and the right moving electrons. Possibly. So, I and those are two distributions system. for mm -hmm. in energy. Okay, I don't no know. holes here. Okay? Go ahead. Sorry, maybe very stupid question, but uh, if there are no holes, the electrons, so when we have the semiconductor, holes goes one direction and electrons another direction. So it means that electrons actually goes the same direction. Yeah, all the electrons go in the same direction, so this is why the void in electrons moves in the other. This is the, the bubble. So, so this model that explains these quasi-Fermi levels talks about the states that, uh, in which we have a movement of the electrons it is, it is considering only electrons, only ele because when you have current in one direction, mm -hmm. it is always a superposition of two currents. Yeah. In that direction, perhaps higher, and in the other direction, perhaps uh, uh, lower. If you have no current, you can also have a superposition of two currents going okay. against each so, other and uh, cancelling each other. So this is why you have no net current. But when you have some net current, meaning that mm -hmm. one of those situation prevails. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and yeah. because of that, why it prevails? Because there is a spread in Fermi level, in quasi-Fermi levels. Because the state occupied moving rightwards and leftwards mm -hmm. have different uh, occupation uh, mm -hmm. level, and those are quasi-Fermi uh, levels. Still, I recommend you go directly to the source, forget what I said. Just, uh, ju just that uh, it's better to, to, to get it from, from the right guy. Okay? Yeah? Shoot. I have a question about this quantum band diagram. I mean this with cutoffs on wave functions. Do I grasp this correctly? Is this having similar shape to the projected density of states? If I do density of states and project it on the real space, for example, on x-axis, right? Yes, it does. It, it, it should be similar to the yeah, but, to but the it adds this uh, sensible uh, position component to this the energy of states. Okay, uh -huh. so you know that okay, uh, we may have uh, this will stay here. Suppose that we have this wave function and that is uh, being plotted in at the bottom mm -hmm. and it has this bump, zero here. This is probability, so this is psi uh, modulus squared already. But it is position dependent function. If it was just that and it had an eigen energy of some number, so this is this eigen energy here and this eigen energy happens to be here. 
I would only draw this, this level to the extent of, let's say, I would, I would take this support only. So this is the length of my level on this. So I would draw this line. If the wave function has another bump here, I would go the same. So I will plot this line over here on the same level. Because this wave function has two bumps. Or there, or there can be this. Oh, in harmonic oscillator, the higher you go, you'll have more uh, oscillations there. And probability will be spread among more of those places. However, it turns out that close at the surface, you have to squeeze the, the, the wave function so it gives higher uh, kinetic energy. Because of the, in Hamiltonian, you have this kinetic part mm -hmm. that squeezing actually rises the, uh, the momentum, okay. Okay? the average momentum. So it means that the energy will be higher. So if I had just a, a wave function that is peaked around the surface, I will have just this guy here. Another surface state will be just here, or perhaps here. And I will have something like band bending. The, the higher, the more the squeezing, the shorter this, uh, the, this uh, period. And the higher the energy. And the higher the energy. So when you go with the envelope, you have something, oh, come on, this is uh, our band bending, right? But this is, uh, those are not energy states, eigenstates. Those are just envelopes. If you wish some statistical, either Fermi levels, or perhaps quasi-Fermi levels, if it is out of equilibrium. But yeah, this was my idea to, to somehow explain to myself why those people using band bending from time to time get the right answers. Okay, and I think perhaps this is the way to, to understand this. Okay, thank you. All right. Uh, any more questions? Oh, are we ready for the first? Uh, <laughs> maybe last question because um, maybe something new, uh, some new ideas about the short circuit in the electrochemical cell where you have the electrolyte and free electrode system. Yep. When we uh, think about the... Um, what will be uh, then the short circuit? Uh, I mean, um, what... Uh, I, my my uh, reconciliation uh, with... with. I mean, uh, oh, yeah, okay, I, I know what I... How we should... Um, how to say... Uh, uh, what potential you should apply to get a kind of short circuit in this kind of the... You have to consider free electrode absolute uh, electrode potentials, not just uh, relative, uh, electro not, not just uh, electrode potentials, but absolute electrode potentials. It is as uh, in uh, Wojtek's uh, presentation yesterday, he had this uh, absolute uh, value of potential where the hydrogen electrode gets 4.4 uh, electron volts, uh, something close to that. And so you have to refer to the absolute potentials, <laughs> however it means, however it sounds. Voltages, good, potentials. Mm. Uh, but then perhaps you will find the answer because you will be independent of this uh, potential, electri electrostatic potential jump uh, on the reference electrode. Mm -hmm. So OCP potential is not the case. I mean, this is this. No, 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 no. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not. So you you need to go deeper and uh, look for for absolute values. However, it is, I mean, it, it is nothing wrong to to go to absolute potentials. But uh, the belief is that if we operate only in the relative potentials, half cell potentials, as they are. There are some cases where where it doesn't work that well, and I was. Uh, uh, exposing one of those cases, which is quite important for other instruments that we uh, manufacture. So, mm. and you will hear about it perhaps tomorrow from uh, from Piotr Homiuk. So, uh, in the morning. Uh. All right. Uh, anybody?
Okay, so I consider it uh, finished. And thank you very much for for your patience. Yeah.